So hi guys, I'm Tony Ponga. I should say, I'm going to talk about how um, we can get anonymized, um, use people who use some forums, uh, basically these forums are using Gravatar. Um, so first I will explain what Gravatar is and how it works, because apparently not everybody knows. Um, then I'm going to show a few attacks on Gravatar, most of them are already known, but apparently not very widely known. And finally, I will show a practical example on a French form. Um, so, just a few words about me. Um, I'm a French-speaking Swiss citizen, so that's why so people know uh, Switzerland is a 60% uh, yeah, 60% uh, 70%. No, that means okay, that's 60%. <laughs> <laughs> they still like that, too, though. That's like 110% that's nice. <laughs> Okay, that's 60% of the German speaking, 30% uh, French speaking, and 10% Italian speaking. So we, from the French speaking part, are pretty much interested in the French politics because we watch French TV and kind of stuff. Uh, and tomorrow is the Swiss, Switzerland's National Day, basically. Um, yeah, it's also kind of the first time I speak at the conference, so I'm a bit stressed. <laughs> and um, I'm not really a passwords guy, actually. I, I'm a reverse engineer. And I'm, I'm a member of the PyCube Capture cap cap the team, Flag team, you've probably never heard of it, but anyway. Um, and my specialization is in embedded device security, that's mainly iPhone, Android, and I also work a very long time on smart cards and uh, pay television security. In another life. Okay. Um, so, what is Gravatar and what does that work? Who knows Gravatar? So, not so many people, so, but okay. Okay, so we explain. So, Gravatar means globally recognized avatar. So what it is, it's a, it's a service that allows you, when you post on a forum or on a website, to always have the same profile picture. And so if you go, I don't know, on a WordPress and you, you post a message, you have always oh the and it's used, uh, the identifier, it's your, the email address used to register on the website. And it's the MD5 hash, simply the MD5 hash of the email address. So you can see if it's, uh, how it links to passwords. And, well, Gravatar is owned by Automatic, that's also the guy of WordPress, I think, and the other thing. And it's used by a few major sites, actually. So, which sites use Gravatar? Um, WordPress, Stack Overflow, GitHub, uh, Hootsuit, Discus, TechDirt, and many others. So, so, if you want to, to have your Gravatar, what do you do? So, you just go to gravatar.com. Uh, if you don't already, you create a WordPress profile. And then you upload an image. So I put the hashtag image, you don't mind, right? That's fine. Okay. <laughs> so you upload your image and then it will be used on every site where you where you go. So if you see oh, I don't have the laser pointer, but if you look, you see, I don't know if you can read it, but can I have a laser pointer? In the way What's the wrong? No reason for it, so <coughs> someone's told it. Oh, it's fine. Anyway, uh, you can see that the image tag with the source goes to gravatar.com slash avatar slash. Oh, thank you, sir. Um, so, when you post a comment on a website that uses gravatar, your profile image, the, the source is like, okay, that's the. Um, because I have several servers, but you can do www.avatar.com slash avatar slash the MD5 uh, hash of your email address. Okay? And so, if you see, if I do an MD5 hash of the address I registered um, on uh, Rata, the hash that is 82B64, and you see here also 82B64. Okay? Now, 
What? Many people say it's like, okay, I don't care because I didn't register a graph. But it doesn't matter. Because even if you come out on a website and you didn't register an avatar, a avatar, you will still try to get this image. So you will still do this tag with the MD5 of your email address every time. And you will get um, a default um, image you can register. It looks very often like this or that one. So how many of you are like, oh, okay, I saw that. How many of you remember this image? A uh, few more. Okay. And that's for this of the character. And there's also others. You can either a uh, website administrator can put the custom image. Or, um, okay, as I said, the MD5 is also if you didn't register. And Gravata also provides other means to have a custom avatar for everyone who doesn't even have to register. Well, that one time it was identical. So who knows that now? Who? Who are it's like, oh, that's it. Have you ever seen this, this in my images? No? You never use um, Stack Overflow or WordPress? Yeah. So if you, if you use one of these sites and you have um, one of these images behind your, your, your comment, the hash of your email address is in the HTML. <laughs> so they also have one way better, that's those ones. <laughs> and uh, monster ID, I never saw those ones. <laughs> so basically that's all images that are generated randomly uh, from the MD5 hash of your email address. Okay? So, what are the risks? What are the privacy risks caused by that? Uh, so the, the first thing is that if I know someone and I know his email address, I can find if he posts on a public website. So I don't know, it's this guy, who knows this guy? <laughs> okay, that's uh, Jean-Philippe Thomas. Uh, you know, he, 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 he's okay with me doing that. So I know his email address here. Yeah. And I hash it with MD5. Then I Google it, and I can find I can find that he posted on this side. See? So already you can stop people like that. That's already not that good. Uh, what else can I do? I can I can try to guess someone's email address. So there's this guy who invented Matt Mullenberg who that invented Gravatars basically. Um, what could be what is he made? Uh, Address could be, I wonder. I have a few ideas. Could be match at moonbag at automatic.com or moonbag at automatic.com, match at automatic.com, or maybe other possibilities. So I hash all of these, I Google them, and oh, okay, that's his email address, you see? Because I got a hit. I got a hit from uh, on Google with the Gravata avatar platform. So it allows me to guess people's email address. In some cases, not good. And of course, the most interesting part that I can try to break the hashes, like we do for password, and find people addresses. So, simply with hashcat. Well, not simply. I have to ask Adam to give me a better version uh, because the, the standard version only supports up to 15 characters for passwords, which is kind of okay for passwords, not for passphrases. But it's also not okay for emails because an email is very often uh, longer than 15 characters. So, was it better? Well, okay. So, before I chat, uh, I didn't invent that. It's already known for a very, very long time. Already in 2008, a guy called Abel um, saw it was a problem and tried to break the uh, hashes on the Stack Overflow. And, um, he, he scrapped Stack Overflow for 80,000 hashes of uh, users' uh, email addresses with, with their um, usernames too, and he used this information to break the final 10% of the emails. But as you know, um, there is a, a lot of correlation between a username and an email address, especially if you're not trying to, to hide. If you, for example, me, I'm Dominic Ponga, if I post on Stack Overflow and the Dominic Ponga, and my email address is dominic.ponga at gmail.com. There's a lot of correlations. It's crazy. It's not very hard. And many people 
people and avatar themselves they really don't play the ad act. It's like, okay, so so what? An email is not secret information. And um, the re resource trade-off is very bad. Okay. It's so hard to, 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 to hash and identify that uh, spammers will never do that, you know. And well, if spammer wants to, to have those email addresses, there are many other ways to do that. So we don't care. It's not important. But really, the problem is not spam. The problem is privacy. Who cares about spam? So um, that's exactly what Gravatar said. They had that in their fact, but I think they re removed it. But you can still find it on the on the thread on the stack of on the stack of the um, they say that um, rainbow table and this password tracking stuff is geared at passwords, which are generally shorter and less globally different from one another than email addresses. I don't believe that, but they say that. And to try to hash, to, to, to brute force these identified the email addresses, um, it will require to construct and operate a monstrous monstrosity that will be prohibitively costly. That was that's what Gravatar said. But in, in fact, uh, emails are longer than password, but uh, the end of the email address is not very hard to, to guess in many cases because most of the email addresses nowadays come, with, come from a few uh, providers like at gmail.com, at outlook.com, at live.com, at yam.com, okay? Um, and they are highly predictable. So, so very often the first name, last name, uh, dictionary words, and I agree like first name, dot, last name, and first letter of first name, last name, stuff like that. There's not so much entropy in fact. And you don't need to monster your city whatever to create them. Uh, you saw Jeremy's machines and uh, also Rick's machines. Like, nowadays everybody has a password cracker with GPUs in his bedroom. <laughs> okay. Yeah, nice animation. <laughs> um, so, now we are going to see how it applies to, to political forums. So, like well, in the USA, we did not know. Uh, the, the political context in France, so we give uh, a few words about that. Um, so the French government is led by François Hollande since 2012. Uh, he's a left-wing, I think what you call social democrat in, uh, in Europe. And uh, he has the lowest satisfaction rate for any French president as far as I know. Uh, his satisfaction rate was uh, 23% in July. 2013, so I think it's pretty low. <laughs> and he did recently uh, uh, quite a few reforms, uh, law reforms that were pretty controversial in France. Um, there was sex, same sex marriage, I think you've got the same thing in the USA. Um, there were huge protests with, let's say, one million persons in Paris. Um, Protesters were arrested just for wearing a t-shirt against uh, same-sex marriage and apparently police uh, used the tear gas against families of protesters and these kids. So that was a huge scandal and stuff. Um, other reforms? Okay, so this, this one's like com complicated words, but I think it just means uh, uh, basically the fact that a uh, same-sex couple could uh, adopt children. And also, he, they wanted to introduce some voting rights for immigrants, but it's on hold also because uh, it's, too much, it's too controversial at the moment. And there also been problem in France with confrontation between uh, left-wing and right-wing extremist groups. And there was one, one guy, left-wing activist, that was killed during a peace fight with right-wing activists. And it was all, again, huge scandal, huge protest, fascism is back, and um, yeah, black boots in the streets, whatever. And well, it turned out that actually the left wing group was talking the right wing group, and they were also having websites with the, the names of the white wing, wing people, their pictures and stuff, and they were actually looking for confrontation. 
But again, that was a pretty tense situation. And you have to know that in Europe, you don't have a, most of Europe, and especially France, you don't have a right to free speech like you have in the US. Um, what is more important uh, in Europe is the, the law against uh, hate speech. So you can go, you can get sued and go to jail for uh, racial hatred speech, um, inciting violent action, or legal. Um, you will very often lose your job if you display a political opinion in public, and you can get harassed or physically attacked by uh, political opponents. Um, just for example, one journalist, a French journalist said uh, most drug dealers are black or and Arabs, it's a fact. Um, he's a right-wing polemist who says that on TV. And it was in the context they were talking about the racial profiling by police officers. And for saying that, he had to pay 2,000 euros for provoking great racial hatred. So, yeah. So, um, in Europe, you cannot say this kind of thing. So, the thing is that several uh, political forums in France are using gravitas. And um, the member of this forum, they use pseudonyms and they try to, to be anonymous because uh, they have an expectation of privacy because, you know, they, they might get sued for what they say on the forums. They often then use these forums to vent and say things that are really not legal. And, some also use red, disposable address of this form because they are smart, but most people don't know do that. And still, you need to use a real address because uh, most form needs uh, address verification before you can post. And so, what are the risks? Uh, the identity of many users can be discovered with Gravata. You can find because if they, are, they use the last name, first name, or, or something like that uh, in their email address. It's easy to find who they are. And even if they didn't do that, um, well, you might use an email address, Google it, and find uh, other places where, where it's used, like eBay, and find the address of someone. And um, the authorities, when they get a court order to find the, the, the identity of someone who posted a comment that they don't like, uh, they will get a court order. But of course, the website, the forum, is located um, in another country, and um, the administrator will not cooperate with police. Uh, but if the police can get the, the email address through, through, through the Gravata hash, then they can go to the provider, who is usually a local ISP, and then tools will give the name with a court order. And also, political adversaries, they get the if I have an address of someone, of a forum user they want to target, then they can use this target to, spend, uh, to send a targeted um, spare phishing email with like malware on the PDF or something, like uh, this the Chinese do uh, apparently with Tibetan uh, guys. Um, so, a practical example though. Now, uh, the main French political forum actually uses Gravata, and it, it's on the far, uh, it's a far wing forum. And while, while the current government is left wing, it's been qualified by, as very influenced by um, Arezzo Image and also as the top one political blog in France by the journal uh, newspaper Le Figaro. So, and the identity of this form, I mean, it's rather, it's supposed, it's suspected who it is, there is no proof, the police cannot prove who it is. And lawsuits are like every week, there are lawsuits uh, filed against the site because of posters because of uh, posters on the blog, comment posters. And so what I did is that um, I wrote the crawler to, to recover the hashes from the site, and I got around 2,800 hash, hashes. And then I got a beta version of Hashcat from uh, Atom, thanks. And uh, to, because of the character's length, because of the length limit, as I say, and I managed to recover 45% uh, of the email addresses. Well, with the help in three days, normally three days, I'm not really trying very hard, with the help of Jeremy. And like 
without even trying to write custom rules that work for images. It's normal rules we use for passwords, you know. And that was in three days. Imagine what the government would do. They could probably recover all of them in three days. Okay. So what I did was an hybrid attack with Hashcat. Um, with a character set of az09 um, and uh, dots, uh, dash, and underscore. That's like the, the, the mask side on, uh, in Hashcat. And for the type dictionaries, there was, uh, on the, the left side dictionary, there was usernames, very, very often the username can be the same as the email, uh, the legal list of Facebook first name, the legal list of Facebook last names, and also a dictionary of uh, words from Wikipedia. And of course, for the right side, uh, a dictionary of popular email domains, and a few other words. So, in France, that's a list I made of uh, popular um, webmail providers, you know, Gmail and stuff. Also, ISP, the emails from, that come from ISPs, like Enough, Telecom, SFR, Orange. Uh, disposable email addresses are interesting too, mail email, your mail, e-work mail, uh, why mail is also pretty popular and it was actually found by very cracking. And another interesting thing that some people might think that by using these disposable email addresses that they are safe. But actually, um, you can go, yes, you can go do a um, password recovery and then you log to the disposable if you know to this size work. Uh, you find the email address, you do a password recovery, then you go log into your mail of, of these things, and you can then change the guy's password. And once you change the password, you can change the email address, and so you have hijacked the, the account. So, a bit of statistics for fun. What is the distribution of, of domains? So, uh, the vast majority is using G Gmail, second is Hotmail, the French version, the dot com version, Yahoo, um, free.fr is very popular in France. You can see that just after this, this one, you have Yopmail, which is, a, which is a, one of the disposable emails. So I can hijack the account of all these people if I want. A few statistics to finish. 13% um, of the recovered address contains the, the username of the person. 34% um, contain a number, 32% uh, have the number at the end, 13% um, contain the punctuation, that's a dot, underscore, or dash, 8% um, dot, 3% an underscore, 1.7% dash, and only 4% have both uh, numbers and punctuation. Um, what further research could, could we do? As I said, this was basic rules for password tracking. Um, there's a lot you can do with, uh, with emails, like there's a lot of rules that can be written, like uh, first letter of first name, last name, first letter of first name, dot last name, <coughs> first, uh, first name, dot last name, as, and many rules can be written. So I can probably go, if I want, a lot further than what's right. And that's it. Thank you, guys. Any questions?